Over the past decade, many of the world's greatest investors have refused to accept Bitcoin as a qualified financial investment. Warren Buffett has stated multiple times how he thinks Bitcoin and cryptocurrency are worthless. Cryptocurrencies basically have no value and they don't produce anything. So you can look at your little ledger item for the next 20 years and it says you've got X of this cryptocurrency or that. It doesn't reproduce. It doesn't it doesn't deliver. It can't mail you a check. It can't do anything. And what you hope is that somebody else comes along and pays you more money for it later on. But then that person's got the problem. But in terms of value, uh, you know, zero. Bill Gates has also stated how if there was an easy way to short Bitcoin, he would do so. However, most recently, we've seen many hedge fund billionaires and financial institutions shift their views on Bitcoin, which could positively impact the crypto market in the long run. After all, institutional firms and investors hold the majority of the purchasing power in the financial markets, so they have a strong influence on the price of securities. In this video, I will be covering how several prominent investors and institutions have flipped the switch in their perspectives and how this may impact Bitcoin drastically going forward. Welcome to Kazian's Academy. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more content like this and let's get right into it. It's not a surprise that hedge funds have billions of dollars in purchasing power. Their clients center around the richest of the richest, and for that reason, we must analyze what goes on in the hedge fund world, because they have a direct impact on many of our investments. For example, just a few months ago, the Archegos Capital incident happened right in front of our eyes and impacted various parts of the market in an extremely dramatic manner. Most recently, Ray Dalio, the founder of the largest hedge fund in the world, Bridgewater Associates, spoke up about Bitcoin and explained how he even purchased Bitcoin himself. Dalio has been doubting Bitcoin for many years now, so it's certainly surprising to see him have a sudden change in heart in his opinion. In 2017, he even claimed that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies were a speculative bubble. Bitcoin today, you really can't make much transactions in it. I got Bitcoin, I want to go through the experience of spending it. It's not easy. You can't spend it very easily. It's not an effective storehold of wealth because it's, um, it has volatility to it, unlike gold, let's say, in which reflects the value of money. Right. Bitcoin is a bubble, okay? Bitco Bitcoin is a bubble. It's a shame. It could be a currency. It, it could work, I mean, conceptually. The main reason Dalio purchased Bitcoin was because of its use case as an effective store of value. This is especially important in today's financial climate, as we are experiencing substantial inflation. Governments all around the world have printed money to combat the pandemic in 2020, and this leads to one result, monetary inflation. The two primary types of inflation are supply-demand inflation and monetary inflation. Supply-demand inflation is when demand is higher than supply, and because of that, the price levels for consumer goods must increase. On the other hand, monetary inflation is when there is a consistent increase in the money supply. Right now, we are experiencing both supply-demand inflation and monetary inflation, as the supply for practically everything is in a shortage, and the Fed is also increasing the money supply. Out of these two types of inflation, Dalio thinks that monetary inflation is the most deadly. When there is too much monetary inflation, people will look for a way to store their money. And that is exactly what we're seeing today. Investments all across the board are increasing rapidly. Stocks, cryptocurrencies, real estate, commodities, and even art are reaching record highs. The problem with this is that once there is too much monetary inflation, the Federal Reserve will have to tighten its monetary policy. However, the moment they raise interest rates, the entire financial market will crash, as those assets were pumped up by low interest rates. According to Dalio, this is a cycle that happens over and over again, and is very similar to the inflationary period in the 1970s, where the inflation rate averaged at a 7.1 year-over-year increase throughout the decade. Because of this, most investors were achieving negative returns in the 1970s when adjusted for inflation. The picture that you're seeing right now is not even adjusted for inflation, so imagine how low the returns were. But the big monetary inflation is the thing. Where do I store my wealth? Okay, Because what happens to the markets is then when you go to those other things, let's say you go to stocks, you go to real estate, you go to other things because they're getting out of that. As those prices rise, like a bond, their future expected returns go down. And as they come closer to the interest rate, so now you've got whatever the interest rates are, it depends on the country, but it comes down, then there's no longer 
the incentive to buy those things and you could have trouble. And it becomes very difficult to tighten monetary policy because the whole thing falls apart. You know, everything's interest rate sensitive. And so the central bank has got to then print that. Then you have negative real returns in stocks and other assets like we did in the 70s but the nominal return goes up. That pattern has happened over and over. In my opinion, while Dalio purchasing Bitcoin could be seen as a very surprising change of heart, it definitely makes sense, given his outlook on our economy in the future. Ray Dalio has been saying for months that cash is trash, and that rampant inflation and the devaluation of the US dollar is coming. While Dalio does have Bitcoin, he sees one major risk, which is that Bitcoin success may actually lead it to become a problem. This year we've seen, um, institutions like yours i mean i don't know whether you guys are actually bought any bitcoin but i certainly know that you're interested in it we've certainly i, I have some bitcoin i think bitcoin's greatest risk is its success hmm. because as it becomes more right now it's not such a big deal um and you know fighting it is more of a big deal um and that's that's it because it's not that big a deal. Um, as it becomes a bigger deal and more of a threat, let's say people want to sell their bonds and they want to buy Bitcoin um, and they want to do that in a bigger way, like buying gold or something in a bigger way. Um, and then there's more transaction. They lose control over that. And that's an existential risk. In other words, Bitcoin success has adverse effects because when Bitcoin becomes a big thing, then governments will want to regulate it and potentially even ban it. As a Bitcoin investor, I'm not too concerned. This is because if Bitcoin gets banned, it'll be a similar situation to gold in the 1900s. Back in 1934, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the Gold Reserve Act, which was essentially a law that banned all Americans from holding gold. Unbeknownst to the government, the Gold Reserve Act only made gold more attractive as an investment. From 1935 to 1940, gold holdings doubled. In 1936, the Treasury Department became scared of inflation because they believed that a large inflow of gold into the US could lead to substantial inflation for the US dollar. In order to do this, the Treasury Department actually had to buy gold inside an inactive account that would not be transferred to US dollars. Essentially, the point that I'm getting across is that if the US government bans Bitcoin, it may actually make investing in Bitcoin more attractive. And this is because that this proves that the US is worried about inflation in the US dollar. Additionally, Ray Dalio isn't alone in the acceptance of Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation. Stanley Druckenmiller, an extremely successful hedge fund billionaire, admitted that while he is unsure of Bitcoin's future and whether or not it will be successful, he owns some as well. Bill Miller, a billionaire value investor, is also a firm believer in Bitcoin because he believes Bitcoin serves as a store of value and has a similar purpose as gold. However, contrary to Dalio, he believes that as Bitcoin goes up in price, it becomes less risky because that means it is reaching mainstream adoption. These three institutional investors, Ray Dalio, Stanley Druckenmiller, and Bill Miller, have a lot of financial influence and will definitely play a major role in changing the institutional view on Bitcoin. In fact, Bitcoin is now being recognized by several large financial institutions as a legitimate asset class, including Goldman Sachs. Most recently, on May 24th, Goldman Sachs officially announced that it would be considering Bitcoin as a serious investable asset. The reason why Goldman did this is that institutional investors are actually taking crypto seriously. As some of you may know, Cathy would have stated that if banks take Bitcoin seriously as a store of value, then Bitcoin could reach $500,000. Let me know whether you think a $500,000 price tag is possible for Bitcoin and whether you think more hedge funds will start investing in cryptocurrencies. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.